Hello and welcome to a brand new synth soundset walkthrough with me, The Unfinished. Today we are looking at Zebra. Lovely Zebra, my favourite. Um, this is a sequel to a soundset I previously released called Refract. And I've cunningly called this one Refract 2. You see how my mind works? Genius. And it does indeed follow on in the style of the original Refract, if you don't remember that. Um, it was very much about modern cinematic sounds. Um, with lots of energy and atmosphere, and there was something of a focus on tempo sync sounds, sequences, bass lines, drum loops, and the sort of thing. Uh, and this is true with Refract 2 as well. However, Refract 2 has come around in a slightly unusual way, in that um, it is partly to do with my um, organising of all my Zebra folders from loads of personal projects and bespoke projects and stuff, and things that never got used, basically, um, organising them into sound set releases for you guys. And Refract 2 kind of came around from stuff that was not fitting into existing folders I had and ideas I already had. Um, I was thinking, oh, these, these sounds, they all have a kind of quality to them. They're all quite gritty and cinematic, but interesting in a modern, slightly unsynthy way, I guess, um, maybe. I don't know. But they felt a little cinematic avant-garde, and I thought, well, let's put them all in a folder together. And then I thought, these actually sound like Refract, that sound sets that I released a few years ago. And I thought, right, let's combine them all together, make a few new patches to fill in some gaps that I felt were there, and, you know, generally rework them all a little bit so that they fit together nicely. And that's what we've got. Um, so yeah, it's a very cinematic uh, sound set, but it's all about energy and dynamism and um, there's lots of multi-stage envelope generator stuff in there, lots of compression and distortion and reverb. Um, so if that sounds like it um, floats your boat, um, if you like a floaty boat, let's bang on and listen to some sound, shall we? Now we're gonna start, there's one little thing, oh, look, I'm interrupting myself before I get to the beginning. We're going to start with the Zebra HZ. Now, normally, how I do my Zebra sound sets is that I'll have a Zebra 2 sound set that I create. Then I will rework all the patches in interesting ways for Zebra HZ, the Dark Zebra. And that will become the Dark Edition. Uh, this time round, um, all these sounds were originally made in Zebra HZ. And so it's actually the Zebra 2 version, which is the reworked version. It's almost like a light edition, I guess you could say, but I didn't go down that avenue because it would have been confusing. Um, so we're going to start with Dark Zebra, and then we're going to move on to the Zebra uh, Zebra 2. But we are going to do something in between Dark Zebra and Zebra 2, which I also think is interesting and is a little bit different. But we'll get there, we'll get there. Don't worry, I've put chapters in so that you can just jump to the sounds. Don't worry, don't worry. Anyway, and here are the sounds. Let's start with the ARPS, because ARPS is tempo synced, of course. Let's see what we've got. So there we go. Immediately we're looking at some interesting, mysterious vibes. bit of speed, little background energy there. I've got quite a few bass lines. Um, that's very much, there's a lot of low end to this sound set. So as well as the bass lines, we've got basses, we've got big hits, drum hits and stuff like that. So here's a good example of how we're using multi-stage envelopes. So we've got this one controlling just the steady bass pulse we've got there and then we've got this one doing that little effect thwart thing just there to go so it just adds a little bit extra all in one package pitching going on there, which is quite nice. Okay, 
I'm skipping through them a little quickly just because I know I've got a lot more to show you. So with some of the um, bass lines and sequences, we've got some melodic stuff going on. Again here, that's being controlled by this multi-stage envelope on the, uh, the tuning of various oscillators. crunchy bass sound. There's those little ghostly wisps going on there, which is actually produced by the reverb. So we've pulled the range right down on the reverb to get some sort of ghostly notes. So if I turn off that reverb, you just get that ghost, uh, you just get the bass sound, and the ghosts have gone. Turn it back on again. The ghosts are back. Quite a fun little thing you can do with the uh, the range on the reverbs. Slowly evolving. Coming back. So there is a probably a bit of a dark and distorted edge to a lot of this sound set. Um, if you enjoy my Tunguska sound set, for example, you'll get some vibes from that creeping into this, I think. So here we've got a bass line that's also got some drums in there, so let's have a little look. So where's the drums coming from, you might be asked. Well, everywhere. So this is definitely the kick. Use the kick when we mute that, but we've also got um, a snare coming, which is clearly coming from the noise module. So if we turn to the noise module, just hear a little bit of that where the snare comes in. And again, this is using uh, multi stage envelopes. We've got this doing the, the steady rhythm. baseline here. Now there are some more acidy kind of electronic crunchy sounds in here. There's a little bit of there's a little bit of break beat and drum and bass that's crept in which I think suits it this sounds really well. Um, it's more of a flavor it's not it's certainly not an attempt to make sounds that are you know resonant of that particular genre. It's just cinematic sounds with a bit of that vibe creeping in here and there. Right, onto basses. So we've got quite a nice mix of analog stuff, dirty analog stuff, 
um, as well as some sort of more hybrid sounds. Um, let's use this patch to have a look at the XY stuff. So this is all programmed onto each patch. Um, so really obvious stuff like filter, closing filter, opening filter, we know how that works. And then this one's got modulation, so we're probably less modulated sound here and then slightly more twisted and modulated there. Color, this tends to me be um, connected to the control of distortion because obviously with distortion modules in Zebra, you can really emphasize different frequencies and that sort of thing. So. so you've really got a real feel for different vibes from the distortion there. And then reverb, obviously, dry as a bone. Wet as a herring? I don't know. <laughs> this sort of thing, wet as, well, let's not go down that road at all. So that's all there, and also obviously mod wheel as well. Some sort of pretty wall is added on the mod wheel. Okay. Punchy dark bass, that one. <laughs> Some unusual playing there. Okay, carrying on through the basses, of which there are a, a good amount, I think. quite digital one rather than the an more analog stuff we've been listening to. Now this one's almost got that kind of workstation vibe to it, hasn't it? That sort of... Sounds like we made a bass from a sample with that one, which is quite fun. Um, obviously we didn't. I don't know what I'm saying, we, it's only me. And then a final bass to play with. So I think you're probably noticing that there's quite a distortion and gritty, dark vibe to the basses. And that's very much what this sound set's about. So we'll move on to um, some nice drum hits. These are a mixture of sort of big cinematic impacts and also some sort of kicky stuff generally. Um, I think this one's quite a sort of dark kick. So nice to add some emphasis. And then some of these sounds will have um, some comb filter stuff going on. So you will get um, a little bit of tuning, not necessarily sort of um, standard tuning, <laughs> but um, an element. You, you'll, you'll find you'll be able to pick a key somewhere on the keyboard that works. Or, you know, if you are you know, not an idiot. Um, you can tune it wherever you like on here, can't you? Because, you know, that's the great thing about using synthesizers instead of samples is that all the controls are there. Millions of controls, well, not millions. Dozens of controls are there that you're not going to get with samples. So, not that there's anything wrong with samples. I'm just saying, you, you know, you're not using just a sound someone had created for you. You're, you're able to manipulate it, make it your own. Hmm. Nice metallic strike. It's got a nice vibe. Uh, keys, not very many keys or, or leads that follow it. Um, that's primarily because, you know, this is a focus on the, as I say, the the rhythmic tempo synced stuff and the um, and the hits and, and, and uh, sound effects. There's not very many pads or soundscapes compared to what I normally do either. So, um, yeah. So this is not, not the sound set if that's what you're after. So something nice and light there. Bit of 
distortion there. And here's um, something of what you might almost call a fame, a reworking of a famous patch for me from my zebra, my dark zebra, uh, humankind sound set. Some of you gamers out there might recognize the origins of that sound. Loops, lots of drums, and obviously lots of multi-stage multi envelope generated stuff here. Here we've got a bit of an ethnic vibe as well as some analog drums going along working together. Um, so we've got various channels here. So we can have a quick listen to what's going on in each channel. So here we have comb filter kind of percussive stuff and here we have the same vibe coming through so we've got it similar sounds coming through from both here but also coming on to here here's our slightly tonal kick and then finally a distorted version of some of the noise stuff particularly from this second channel here and then all together. So we've got lots of things going on at once to give you that depth, but you can, you know, you can pick and pick a, a particular part of it out if you just want to use only one part of it. And obviously the XY patches work really well on here, so let's let's play with the comb, it's gonna do a lot. Yes, quite a few loops, and um, we get a bit breakbeaty at the moment, so let's look forward to that. Nice atmospheric drum loop. We've got a little deep kick and some sticks again with the comb filters. Big cinematic damage. I'm not referencing, <laughs> not damage like that, you know, not heavy or steel damage. I'm not trying to recreate what they're doing. Lord, no. So this is quite a fun patch. We've got um, three channels going on, which gives us a drum beat and also some sound effects. See that sort of sweep in and then that's and that sudden drop out. And then we've got another one here which is for tuning, which keeps the tuning, rises the tuning here and keeps it steady for a bit. And then we've got another envelope to get that, that sort of drum kick, that beefy kick there. And another one that's more for the envelope. So you've got tighter one for the envelope than you have for the um, something else, the filter I think. And then you've got the basic drum rhythm going here. So if we do a bit of muting again. So that's just the noise sweep. It's run through a comb filter so you can hear the filter doing something slightly rhythmic. There, yeah, which is quite a nice build. And then this one should be the big kick. There we go. And then finally we've got the drum rhythm all together. Lovely. And that's the fun of multi-stage envelopes and uh, it's taken me too long to get around and have fun with them. Right, what have we got here? Just some deep kicks. And then finally, with the last loop that we're going to play, we've got to the break beats. Hurrah! There's a few more break beats than this. We've kind of skipped them accidentally somehow, but here we go. I've had a lot of fun making these, I can tell you. So 
So again, four nice channels. We've got kick, snare, and hats going on there. And we're also using the comb filters and um, in one of the reasons this works so well in dark separate is we've got four comb filters. Um, we're using three of them here. So we're giving a bit of color and almost realism, I like to think, to those kick and snare sounds. Right, so let's do some muting again. So here we've got the kick. The comb is doing a little bit here, so it's not just a standard sort of analog kick. Here we've got our snares, and a little ghost snare hits as well. Again, controlled by the cone. So if we, so we've got a bit of tone from the the oscillator two and the noise, and then just a little bit more depth from cone filter. Then we've got our hats here, and we're using the uh, the side band here just to uh, focus in on some frequencies. And then finally over here, we've got a little bit of sort of ethnic bell kind of ride symbol thing happening alongside the hats. So it's not just white noise. Yeah, lots of fun, lots of fun. Um, and we'll get into that a bit more soon. And I'm also probably going to do a let's make a noise video about making break beats with uh, Zebra if that interests you. It interests me, so. Right, pads, as you can see, not as many pads as I would normally do, so let's just go through these. These are just here to add some extra atmosphere. I mean, lots of my other sound sets are brimming with pads and you've got options there and here. We've just got a few things that I felt fit with the vibe we're going for here. Something a little weirder for this one. Something a little bit weirder, which is always cool. little pad. That's got rather a nice atmosphere, I think. And then soundscapes, and this will probably be cheery, won't it? Death Garden, I imagine that's very light and frothy. Yeah, it's clearly designed um, for that moment where our romantic leads take a nice stroll through the flowers. Plasma.
Right, now onto sound effects. Handful of these, but I think they're important to this sound set. So that's got a nice kick with a bit of a synth roar. And here we've got a riser cut and transition thing. Again, it's got that, that nice bit of distortion going on. And we're on to the sequences already. Or say already, we're 25 minutes in. So there's a mixture of kind of gritty avant-garde contemporary stuff here and also some more um, analog sounding stuff. And that noisy acid stuff comes back as well. Let's see what the module does here. Just focuses on some lighter. And what have we got going on here? So we've got a pulse here, creating a kind of um, side compression thing. Tuning here, fairly simple. One note, other note. And that's it, because the ARP is controlling the actual rhythm. It's an ARP. Bitty energetic sound. <clears throat> Some weird glassy texture sequence here. So along with the sort of the energy and the distortion stuff going on, hopefully you can hear that there's quite a lot of atmosphere in there as well. These sounds are gonna really bring a lot of vibe to your tracks. Okay, and that loud beating sound is coming from outside. It's not part of that patch. Of course, they've started work again today. I used to do a video. Were they doing any work yesterday when I wasn't doing a video? No, of course they weren't. Scum. All right, this is one of my favorite patches. It's got a bit of that sort of alien uh, alarm vibe, which is so cool. Uh, I think this one's a little bit more of a synthy one. So you've got that um, synthiness. And there's a kind of twisty sound in there as well. I don't know if we can isolate it. I can hear it a bit better when we turn off that channel. Fun. And then, oh, the way we've done this means we're only going to hear one of our synth sounds, but it's quite a cool one. Electric guitar fans, rejoice. <laughs> some fun here let's have let's play with the color here lots of fun stuff going on there so that's a reasonably quick flick through um, what you get with zebra uh, the Zebra HZ version of Refract 2. Now, this will be called the Dark Edition still, uh, but it will, like all other Dark Editions, it will come with uh, the Zebra 2 patches as well. Now, standard Refract 2 is just going to be the Zebra 2 patches. Um, what we're going to do now is... Um, actually, no, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go with the Zebra 2 patches now, so bear with me. 
as I bring Zebra 2 up. Hello, there he is. Um, right, so we're going to go through these sounds just as we've been through the zebra, the dark zebra sounds. Um, we'll play some different sounds so you get a bit more of a feel for it. Um, so these have been reworked from the original uh, dark zebra versions of the patches, as I mentioned before. Um, Um, yeah, so they've all got the same kind of vibe, um, but it's taking those patches and doing something a little bit different with them. All right, uh, bass lines. So again, we've got multi-stage envelope stuff going on, and again, um, we lose some multi-stage envelopes between Dark Zebra and Zebra 2. There's only four in Zebra 2, whereas we have eight. Um, so there are some patches. The original patches had, I think I did a handful of patches that had five or six multi-stage envelopes going on. Obviously, when we come to do the Zebra 2 versions, we lose one or two of them. We're, only, we're down to four um, envelopes, so that's one of the ways that the patches had to be redone. Similarly with the comb filters, we only had we only have two comb filters in Zebra 2 and we have four in the Dark Zebra and Zebra HZ. Always do these fairly quickly so you're just getting a more of a sense of the vibe. Again, we've got all the XY pads stuff going on, and we've got mod wheel. Nice bouncy synth bass line. That's going to get the energy going. going on here. We've got the bass line in this channel and then we've got a little squirrely sort of synth thing going over the top. You can have lots of fun with multi-stage envelopes. It is true. Something acid. got the same rhythm there. How funny. You could have some fun interchanging between those two, that'd be quite good. Some weird growly stuff here. So you've got the pitch subtly controlled here, I think. And a bit more aggressive filtering going on there. Quite nice, and then onto basses. A bit synth pop there, didn't we? This is nice and subtle. I'm hoping the mod wheel makes it unsubtle. Indeed. I like that sound, it's got a kind of Again, it's got that kind of 
digital workstation kind of sampling kind of feel to it. Takes it a little bit beyond normal synthesis. Okay, and then on to drums. So here's some different drums here. That's a very analog tone, isn't it? I like it. Big cinematic hit. That's very nice. You can hear the tonal quality there, so you can get something going with the metal there. Okay, and here we have a an unpredictable synth mallet. lead so that gives you a bit of the there are there are definitely some patches in here that have a kind of slightly twisted analog vibe to them that um we seem to keep missing somehow <laughs> in doing this okay, here's some break beats Let's see what we've got going on in the performance windows. So we've got some control over the kick here. So we make it deeper. A bit more tone on there. And then we've got the noise and the hats control here. So we push that there and push them here. Suddenly we've got a very different sound indeed. some more interesting stuff about that coming at the end of this video. Right, I think this might be another break, but yep, here's another break. Here come the breaks. The snare going on, interestingly, in the right-hand channel here. Obviously, you can move that if you want to. <laughs> but I thought it'd be quite nice to separate things out a bit on that one. Nice simple noise thing going on. Unpredictability really brings that hybrid element of the sound set to the fore. I think this is a slower breakbeat. And again, you know, I'm able to do fun things here. Let's, um, let's open that up. Suddenly we've got a very different beat. So much fun to be had on the XY pads. It took me a long time programming, programming them, so you damn well better use them, you swines. And hello. We're getting all the kind of break see stuff now. But these are great for those action moments and even some uh, more atmospheric things. You can just slow them down. I mean, for example, so what have we got? We've got One of the simplest ways to do this is in, if you want to change um, the tempo, we can slow it down. If we slow everything, if you slow it down by one on all the elements, we don't have anything working there now, do we? So, so we drag them all down to one. That basically halves the speed. So. So now it's a more low rhythm um, and obviously the same and then if you drag it down to two then that halves it again and also you can double the speed so if we want suddenly the snares to come in more frequently this is going to sound terrible but it will show you what it does yeah 
Yeah, so if you want to do that, you can. Don't know why you would. Right, uh, pads. Let's quickly go through these. Lash, cinematic, synthy. Nice tuning. Enjoyably out of control is how I'd describe the tuning there. going on there and obviously you know uh, as, as an example we're obviously modulating everything with the LFO one here so if you wanted to slow that all down change it slightly. so that's a bit less pronounced if you think it's too quick again something that actual synth sounds have over samples. Soundscapes. Nice harmonic textures. hybrid sounds, that, that sort of bowed mechanical element in there amongst the synthiness. Right, and some sound effects, we get a couple here. Right, and then we're on to sequences. Ooh, badly played. With some quite fun oscillations going on there. We do have a handful of differently time signatured patches in the sequencer and baseline section, I think. It's got a nice um, energy to it. It's almost kind of orbital esque, actually, that one, isn't it? Is it? Some 
crazy stuff going on here with a, a long winding up envelope. Some atmospheric bleeps. I think this is a, a synthy one. Okay, and then into the synths to finish. Kind of creepy synth string to... Play some accents with. And then what have we got here? Oh, synth woodwind of nightmares. That sounds like fun. I just de deviates from the original patch in a way that's quite interesting. You've got a more um, normal, should we say, synth sound here. Got a kind of woodwind, high pitch woodwindy thing going on. Which is which? That's the synthy one. So this sounds not quite harmonically um, linked. It's a bit wrong, which is what makes it work. Now, if we were to, exam for example, to compare this to, uh, let's compare it to the Zebra HZ version of Marat. This is the original patch, so this is why it's called Synth uh, Woodwind of Nightmares. So again, we've got that kind of thing of not really being tuned properly, but it still works. So that's one of the fun ways in which a Ze the original Zebra HZ patch will differ from the, the, the Zebra 2 one. Um, right, so we're going to go on to the last bit of this sound set now, which is something different. I've not done this before. Uh, unless I've completely lost my mind and forgotten. So we've actually got, um, as well as there being the normal Zebra 2 Refract 2 version and then the Dark Edition with Zebra 2 and the original Zebra HZ patches, there's a Dark and Expanded version which has the Zebra 2 patches. It has the original Zebra HZ patches, but it has a bonus expansion of 160 patches. Uh, there's 150 patches in the, in the normal version of extra 160 patches, which are all variations on some of the patches in Refract 2. Now, the reason for this, partly, is because the sounds in this sound set, apart from a few new ones that I made, are, are from bespoke projects that I worked on where I, whatever I, for some reason, what I made didn't get used. I didn't send it, or the project changed and none of my sounds were used. That sometimes happens. And so there, when I'm doing bespoke programming, I'm doing lots of different variations of sounds I like. I'm thinking, what if I take it in this direction? What if I take it in that direction? Um, and so quite often I'll have lots of different variations of, of one, what started off as an original patch and all be given the same name. Sometimes they go really different and sometimes the changes are very subtle. Um, so what I thought would be interesting to do on this one, because I had so many of them, was to do an expansion version so that if you... Um, want more of Refract 2, you can get it. And what it offers you is um, patches that you really love from Refract 2, but with some different colours and directions that mean you can use them alongside the patch you love, but in a way that brings something else. Um, let's, let's try some out rather than have me explain. Playing it too much, so we'll get, we'll look for ones where there's lots of different 
example. We'll, we'll, maybe we'll do one from each section. That would be a good way of doing it. So if we go with, let's go with Truth Hurts because we've got three variations here. So if I start off with, um, where are we? I'm in the wrong folder, you fool. That's the original refrains. So Truth Hurts. So here it is. So we've got this interesting, frothy, little bit noisy and atonal um, arpeggio. And so here are three variations on that that I that I liked. Um, there are more. I've only curated... Cura... Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. Ah, so this is what it looks like to see a man having a stroke live on camera. Um, curated the best ones, basically. Some of the drum loops, they were like, I, I had 20, 30 versions of them. And on here, I've, I've, I've not done more than three or four extra ones, so. So here you can kind of hear the original sort of slightly groaning synth line, but there's more noisy percussive stuff coming through. And then with version C, We've got more modulation happening. It's, and the percussive stuff sort of evolves more slowly. It's a bit less sort of um, thrashy and trashy. And then D. Again, we've got a little variation on the synth bit and a little variation on the noise bit, which I still think brings something different to what we're doing. So bass lines, we've got, let's go brick dust because that's quite an interesting one using the, um, the multi-stage envelope. So steady bass line and that sort of warpy warpy sound effect coming in. So we have, look, we have four more variations here. So let's, let's see what they sound like. So we've got a more blown out kind of um, bass version there, and the, the S effects are su more subtle. And then C. So the sound effect's more intense, it's there all the time. And the, the bass line's a bit wider and a bit crunchier. And D. Right, so now we're going really action-y. We've upped the pace of the bass, it's a bit more percussive. And that alarm, the SFX now is more of a sort of insistent alarm. I really like that version. Part, that's the sort of sound that made me do the expansion where I had a different variation of the patch I liked and I thought, but that's good enough to go in, but what if we do something a bit different? Right, now finally we've got um, E. So we go now back to having a really tighter bass line, a crunchier, tighter bass line. And the SFX sound is a bit more subtle. Okay, so um, what should we, which one should we do? We're moving on to, there's only a couple of basses, so we don't learn too much there. You're understanding the concept now. We'll go, should we go with basement? Because we've got, again, we've got four there. So basement here is, let's find it. So there aren't a lot of the, I haven't done variations on the basses. Um, that tends to happen a lot less. Um, but also, it's more obvious what's a, what's a variation on the sound of the sequence because you've got the same pattern happening generally um, rather than it just being the oscillators changing, if you know what I mean. Anyway, drums. So this is, so we've got kind of punchy, we've got a bit of kick, we've got a bit of snare and a bit of, hat all, all kind of going on so it's quite a nice sort of analog sound so let's hear the variations so here we've got the comb filter presumably on the snare doing a bit more tonally here so we've almost got a kind of bell tower kind of vibe to it and here we lose the snare in the hat a bit and we get much more punch from the kick 
There we've got a slightly more subtle change. We go darker with the kick, a bit more reverb, a bit more atmosphere, and a bit more noise. And then... Well, that's quite similar, isn't it? Okay, so that's a bit more subdued. Yeah, so we're getting back a bit more back towards the original sound there, but just a bit more punch, I think, is what the main difference there is. Um, well, we've got a few drums. Let's do another drum um, to give a real feel for this. So we'll go with Skyrocket. Okay, so metal sounds. This will be quite interesting. So this is the original. Short and sweet. Nice bit of metal through the comb filters and noise, one presumes. And then we've got... So that's very different. That's really tightened out all the low end and really given it sort of clack sound. I said clack. Here we've got a lighter, crispier metal bit. We get a bit more of the kickback. So we kind of, that sounds almost like it's sort of folding in on itself. We've got a bit of that kick and then there's quite a sort of filtered and modulation of feel to the noisy snare bit there. Plus some extra echoes. Well, that's quite fun. So we've got the kick comes more to the fore, but we've got this kind of springy kind of snare sound. Ooh, that's fun, isn't it? Okay, so I think we're going to move on to um, loops. Let's pick a loop we haven't heard yet. So asteroids we haven't heard. So we've got a nice insistent sort of ethnic metallic sound and a bit of a kind of electronic snary thing going on there. Um, so let's listen to the variations here. So the snare bit stronger comes to the fore there. We've lightened up the, the ethnic hits. Here we've made the snare a bit more lo-fi again and the the ethnic hits now is more electronic, more sort of hatty sound. And here we've got a crunchy snare, and we've just got a different tone to those ethnic beats coming through. Right, let's pick, let's see if we can pick a... Let's go, let's go with Wiped Out, because that's my kind of first break beat I did. So it's kind of funky drummer style break beat. And then if we go to the variations, this is going to be fairly tonal, really. So we've got a lot more sort of punch on the snare. Then. We've got a kind of funny tonal thing happening with the kick, which is quite interesting. It's kind of springy again. So again, we're going a bit more with the tonal element of the snare. And the kick's a bit more normal here. And then finally, A weird kick and some really punchy and in your face snares going on. So that's fun. Um, shall we do a pad? I don't see why not. Let's see. In terms of pads, is there one that's got a few variations? So let's try damning evidence. I don't think we played that going through before, so let's so let's just play A minor. So we've got a lot of movement. That's quite nice what we've got going on there exactly. So we've just got two, two oscillators with some fairly simple organic oscillator waveforms I've designed um, going into a filter. There's not a huge amount happening with that, so this will be interesting. So if we go into the expanded version of this, let's see what we've got. Okay, so we've got some more upper frequencies. It's a bit more intense, less of that darkness, but it's a bit more... Not in your face, because it's quite, it's still quite an ambient pad sound, but it's, it's very much more present. Present, that's a good word. And then this version. So again, we're more subdued, but we've got quite a different tonal vibe to it. Here we've got... It's almost got a slightly fluty sound to it. Okay, shall we do... 
soundscape. Which soundscape should we do? Let's do. Um, let's do Passful. I don't think we've. I'm not sure we played Passful before. Okay, no, we didn't. So we've got this very sort of glitchy, rippling mechanical texture, as it says on the screen. It's quite insistent. Um, so let's see what we've got with the variations. So the ripple's more subdued and we've got more of that sort of industrial sine wave coming in. So that's quite good if you want the same vibe, but you don't want that sort of insistent, ripply, almost percussive sound going on. And here we bring back that percussive sound a bit, but it's darker and a bit deeper and a bit more atmospheric. Okay, right. Which, which sound effect did we not do? I think we kind of did them all. Um, what do I feel like doing here? Should we go with... Let's go with Retaliate. We've got a few more there. I'm pretty sure we did play this one. Um, Ah, this is the whoosh bang. Okay, this should be an interesting one to look at then. And so that's the original. No, that one. Okay. So that's got an overall a sort of more metallic feel to it, that one. Actually, was it also short longer? I'm not sure. Yes, it is. Well, certainly than that one. What's the original one? Whizzing around. Okay, so the original is shorter. Yeah, so here we've got that metallic one. Then this this one is the same length as the original, and it's a bit more a bit more noisy, a bit more synthetic, I think. It has a bit less of the organic feel. And then we've got a slower one again here. So they've got this kind of ducking effect between the the impact and the um, the the noisy whoosh into it. Okay, let's have a look here. We'll do a couple here. I think we'll start off with poisonous because that's got lots of variations, and that's I do remember this being all of them are quite different. And um, so this is the original. So we've got that sort of mysterious, evolving, glassy, metally thing going on. And then our first variation is more of a soaring, bowed kind of vibe. And it's happening more frequently. So we've changed the speed of the LFO. We've changed the shape of the envelope mostly there, I think. And this one's even quicker still. We've lost that metallic vibe. We've got a bit more of that bowing thing there, but also a bit more percussive, mainly through the the, um, the speed of the LFO here. And finally, well, now we've gone out of control. <laughs> so obviously, various different things are being affected. Particularly, the sort of the pitch is wandering all over here, the place here. Okay, well let's have, let's have a look at Vice Squad as well because that's more of a synthy one, isn't it? So this is our original version. So it's very much got a, a melodic quality to it, springy, synthy. But it's still got that grit. So here. Obviously, we've got um, it's still quite synthy, but it's a different synth. It's a darker synth, a more gated kind of synth. Slightly more, a slightly less generous sound, I would say. And then here we've got a brighter one, which really brings out those metallic tones and that um, weird kind of LFO on the pitch thing going on. 
And then finally onto synths, well, we've only got one synth sound which has got variations, and that's our lovely electric guitar. So let's see what our variations sound like. So we're really just looking at different guitar tones. That's a bit lighter, a bit more upper frequencies, a bit screechier. That's got quite a trashy amp sound, which I think is quite fun. Um, so there you go. That is Refract 2. Um, it's been a long old video because there are three versions of it, essentially. Um, so we have the original Zebra HZ, which is the Dark Edition, and then we have the reworked Zebra 2 version, which is just called Refract 2 for simplicity. And then we have the expanded version, the Dark and Expanded version, um, which gives you all the patches. And in total, it's 460 patches. So you get the original 150 Dark Zebra patches. You get the reworked, 150 reworked Zebra 2 patches, because it's the same patches reworked. And then you've got 160 expanded patches. patches. Well, I'm not very good at talking today, am I? Which are variations on some of the original 150 patches. Certainly not all of them. Probably... Well, I don't know, maybe half? Maybe not even that. I don't know, actually. I haven't looked at it. It it might be. It might not be. Someone will find out at some point, I guess. Um, but not that. Yep, so that's what we've got. Um, so the Zebra 2 version will be twenty four ninety nine plus VAT. The Dark Edition will be a spider has just climbed out from out <laughs> from behind one of my pictures. That's delightful, isn't it? Thank you. You come to see what I'm doing. Um, the Dark Edition will be £34.99, and then the full expanded edition will be £44.99. And that gives you, as I say, 460 zebra patches. Um, and I'm also going to be doing a limited period where I've got a refract bundle going on. So if you didn't buy the original refract, that will bundle all the sounds from the original Refract, so that's essentially the Dark Edition where you've got both versions of it, um, with the full Dark and Expanded version of Refract 2. And that totals to something ludicrous, like 760 patches or something, I think. Yeah. Um, so, and that will be... Um, yeah, available for a limited period. Um, just in case you want both and you didn't pick up the original refract when that came out. Okay, well, thank you very much for sticking around this long because we've gone over an hour for the first time in a very long time, which means it's going to take longer to edit and longer to upload. Oh, blimey. Anyway, hopefully it's been worth it because I think this is a cracking sound set. Um, one of my demos did say it was their favourite sound set I've ever done, um, which is a lovely thing to hear. Um, and indeed sent me a demo track less than 24 hours after it's sent in the sound. So, you know, inspiring stuff. Hmm. Anyway, thanks for watching this Zebra Refract 2 video. Um, I'm going to be doing some more videos this week. I'm going to be doing some Let's Make a Noise videos in the studio for the rest of this week, um, which I'll be releasing as and when. Um, so I've got some fun little ideas there to, to go along with. One's going to be, uh, one's definitely going to be doing showing how to make a breakbeat with Zebra 2. Uh, with Zebra HZ, sorry, so that we've got all the comb filters and all the um, yeah, envelopes. And I'm also going to be doing a video on GeForce's Imposca 3 um, synth, the new update for that synth, um, which I did some factory patches for, um, which I think is really cool. Um, it's, it's a very interesting synth, so that's why I'm going to do a video on it. Um, I'll showcase the patches I made for it, and I think what we'll do is we'll probably make some some new patches from scratch as well, just for a laugh. Um, great. So thanks again for watching. And one hour, 10 seconds has just ticked over on my screen. 10 seconds, 10 minutes. I can't tell the time anymore. Um, anyway, oh, here we go. We end with mad and crap waffle. Thanks. Bye. Enjoy Refract 2. Ta-ta.